If you were manning a Pyromancer prior to New Horizon, you probably took a look at the patch notes for this latest update. You scrolled down to the global cooldown changes to Moaning Winds and threw your hands up in the air and said to yourself, well, my Pyro is toast. And I can see why that would be your initial impression. Moaning Winds has been a staple of many anomaly power builds since it was discovered you could equip it on three weapons and then cycle through them in short order, effectively destroying huge mobs using that mod effect. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I'm here to tell you that anomaly power pyro builds are still alive and kicking, maybe even a bit stronger than that prior to New Horizon. And with a few changes to your build structure, you can still wipe the map with your pyro. But before we dive into today's build guide, I wanted to again thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Your support for my Outriders content has been out of this world, and I'm truly humbled. And just in case you aren't yet a sub, please smash that sub button and remember to ring the notifications bell to receive all future upload alerts. I really think you're going to like this one. Let's go. So, two quick points before we dive headlong into this build. One is that this build is not for the faint of heart. It is completely structured for clearing CT15 solo in the fastest times possible. Now that being said, I will show you a couple of ways to improve your survivability, but the main build itself is all about just full on pyro assault. And number two, the basis of this build is to mostly shift away from relying completely on moaning winds, although I do use it on one of my weapons. This means we need to structure our mods, class tree, and skills to squeeze every last ounce of power out of this build. First up is the class tree, and remember that Pyromancer Melee inflicts burn on targets while skills mark targets, and when you do kill that marked enemy, you will heal for 24% of your max health. Now the way I built this setup is using the top Ash Breaker tree, not because we are looking for beefy firepower bonuses, but instead for as much cooldown reduction and Ash Blast damage as possible. So start off first in the middle Firestorm tree and spend your first 4 points here, ending up at the major node of Wildfire for that 10% cooldown reduction. Then begin spending your points in the top Ash Breaker tree. Once you unlock them, take both Hot Situation and Incinerate for the extra Anomaly Power and extra Ash Affliction. Keep moving out the tree until you get to the Ashes to Ashes Major Node, which inflicts Vulnerable, a damage multiplier on any targets afflicted with Ash. Now the final major node is hurt twice as long, which increases our damage versus elites and reduces their damage versus us. Finally, spend your last two points towards the end of the tree, but you will not be unlocking the master node of Burning Situation. Here's one of those alternatives I spoke about earlier, as a lot of players will look at the skill tree I've shown, think it's all wrong, and decide to go the Tempest route. And that is not a bad alternative, as it specializes in general AP nodes and has been the tried and true way to spec your class points. But since we are wanting as much Ash damage and Affliction as possible, plus we are looking for the fastest cooldown reductions for the Ash Blast skill, then the few points in the middle tree using the Ash Breaker path will work best. Now, I'm not saying you can't make this work just using the Tempest tree, just that it won't yield the maximum results. For the skills, we are going with the trio of Heat Wave, Ash Blast, and Overheat. Now, since we are using the Ash Breaker tree, we need Heat Wave in conjunction with our Akari gear pieces to really help boost our anomaly power levels. Ash Blast is the next skill in our rotation, and this will immobilize targets in a huge radius across the battlefield. Finally, Overheat is the trigger to set off all your map clearing capabilities, as with your gear mods, it will consume the Ash, triggering massive damage versus any target that was previously afflicted by Ash. Moving on to the gear, and this build uses three pieces of Akari and two pieces of Epic gear. Now don't pay any attention to the visuals here because I have used the transmog to equip the exosuit armor. For the helmet, I am using Akari, as it comes with AP, Skills Life Leech, which does come in handy, especially versus mobs of riflemen, and finally, Status Power. Fire Tsunami is a tier 3 mod that comes standard on this gear piece and that works just fine for the build. Now I've also added on Ash Increase Range, a tier 1 Ash Blast mod to increase the range by a whopping 66%. 
The upper body armor is my second piece of Akari with the same attributes as the helmet of Anomaly Power, Skills Life Leech, and Cooldown Reduction. Detonator is a tier 3 mod that comes standard on this armor piece and is absolutely essential to keeping your overheat cooldowns as low as possible. Tidal Wave is a tier 1 mod that comes standard on this piece and works well for the build. Now there's also this Ride the Wave, another tier 1 mod that does the exact same thing as Tidal Wave, so if you need to weave that into your build, you do have that option. The pants are the third and final piece of Akari with the same attributes as the helmet and upper body armor. Anomaly Echo, which is a tier 3 mod, comes standard on the pants and is perfect for our setup as anytime we activate a skill, we pick up bonus FP and anomaly power. Now I've also chosen to equip Death Sentence, which is another tier 3 mod found exclusively on the Torturer's Mask, and I know this is not going to be an easy find, but once you have it for the mod, your build will be that much stronger. Now Death Sentence boosts weapon and anomaly damage versus targets afflicted by Ash by 40% for weaponry and 30% for Anomaly. Since we now have three pieces of Akari equipped, we can receive the set bonus of 50% Anomaly power bonuses for 10 seconds for each enemy damage by Heat Wave, and this is an enormous bonus if you can catch a mob with that skill. Now between our gear mods, the Akari set bonuses, and certain mods, even when using what is considered the Pyromancer Fire Power Tree, we can still achieve enormous AP bonuses. My gloves are epic tier with anomaly power, cooldown reduction, and status power as the attributes. Now these gloves came with Burnt Out, a tier 1 heat wave mod that applies 25% more damage bonus if a target is hit with the heat wave. Now I've also added on Master Consumer, a tier 3 overheat mod, which is super critical to making this entire build work. Now, Master Consumer is found on the Akari Boots, and it allows Overheat to consume both Ash or Burn to deal damage, whereas by default, Overheat would only be capable of consuming Burn. My boots are also epic tier with AP, status power, and cooldown reduction, and I have gone with Captain Hunter, a tier 3 mod for more pop versus elites, along with Ashen Boost, a tier 2 mod for 20% more damage versus targets afflicted with Ash. Rounding out this build guide is of course the weaponry, and again, pay no attention to the transmog visuals, as this is not the death shield I am using, but instead, it is the funeral pyre. Now, Shadow Comet comes standard on the Funeral Pyre and hits for incredible amounts of damage. I've also added on Claymore Torrent, which got a huge buff for the New Horizon update. As like Shadow Comet, it also can hit for tons of damage. Now, if you can hip fire targets with this setup, it will rain down multiple Claymore Torrent effects and can absolutely dissolve mobs if they are tightly packed together. For the secondary, this is actually the Roaring Umbra, legendary LMG that comes standard with Kinetic Stomp, and if fired while in close produces a huge shockwave that deals a tremendous amount of damage. Also, here is where I have added on my one Moaning Winds mod, which got a 60% base damage increase for the New Horizon update. For the sidearm, which you will use from time to time, I have gone with the Torment and Agony Legendary Pistols, as the standard mod of Clip Combustion deals a nice bit of damage for an in-close reload. Radiation Splash, a tier 3 mod I've added on, got a whopping 208% base damage increase for this latest update, and now hits incredibly hard when you reload in close to targets. Just think Moaning Winds, but through the use of two mods. Hopefully the build is starting to make a bit more sense, but how does it all work together? Remember that everything you do is about getting the maximum results for your Ash Blast and Overheat. Now through the Akari set bonuses and Heat Wave, you will be able to reach tremendous levels of anomaly power. Use the rotation of Heat Wave, Ash Blast, and Overheat to absolutely mutilate most non-elite targets on the field of battle. Now for those pesky elites, you've got formidable firepower through your weaponry. I like to start with a very quick barrage from the Funeral Pyre, switch to the Roaring Umbra for a quick burst and reload for Moaning Winds, and then if anything is left standing, you've always got the pistols in reserve with Clip Combustion and Radiation Splash. Also try experimenting with hitting a mob first with a Heat Wave and then hip fire them with the Funeral Pyre and just watch them get liquefied. If you can time the mobs, your heat waves, and skill rotations along with your weaponry, even elites cannot withstand your overwhelming barrage of anomaly damage. Now just to end this one up, I want to go over the cons for this build. And there are a few that you need to know going in, because this setup is definitely high risk, high reward. 
Now, first up is the fact that while this build is capable of running through CT-15s in a full squad, it's not entirely designed to be in that environment. The build itself is fully optimized for solo CT-15 clears in blistering fast times. Also, pay attention to riflemen and levels that feature insurgents. They are extremely capable of ripping through your limited health, so make sure to hit them quickly with your heat waves and skills in order to heal through those damage spikes. And just one final note as we finish up this build guide, I would like to publicly thank Spooky, an extremely knowledgeable moderator in our Discord, for turning me onto this build. He knows his pyromancer, and I could not have produced this build guide without his direction. As always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. Don't forget to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. If you could be so kind as to rate and or share this video, it really goes a long ways towards getting it promoted within the YouTube algorithms. Now, I mention this every Outriders video, but you are all invited to join my community Discord server, which recently has ballooned to nearly 4,000 members. Just check in the video description, click on the open invite link, accept the rules, and you are in. Once there, we've got a dedicated and experienced group of moderators waiting to get you pointed in the right direction, along with channels for builds, tips and tricks, and the extremely popular LFG, or looking for group areas. Don't get overly frustrated with the lack of a decent matchmaker system or in-game comms. Join my Discord and be in a group up on mics knocking out your chosen content in a matter of minutes. Trust me when I say that we've got an awesome Outriders community and have every angle already covered for you. Also, don't forget to find and follow me on Twitch for weekly streams. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter for all my latest posts concerning most things gaming related. Links to all of these platforms in the video description below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.